We have here a group of data that we are going to create a pivot table from. We have four columns and 78 rows of data. The first thing we need to do is look through this and make sure we don't have any blank rows or blank columns, which we don't. It's a small amount of data, I know, but it'll be fine for us to create a pivot table for. Let's go ahead and go to our Insert tab on our ribbon, and let's make sure that we are somewhere inside our table of data here. We have to select the cell. doesn't matter which one. And we're going to click on the very first option on our ribbon here, the Pivot Table. And we see we get our Create Pivot Table window. And the first thing it says, choose that data we want to analyze. And we have two choices. Select the table or range, which, because we already had a cell selected in our table, it's already done for us. Notice I have my dancing ants all the way around all of my data and that's great that's what I'm looking for or if I have an external data source I could go ahead and choose it that way I also have the option here my table has been selected it gave me that range but I could click and drag and select the data I wanted but I'm fine just the way it is now I can choose to create that pivot table on a new worksheet or an existing one. Now I don't have a lot of room in here so I'm going to go ahead and leave it on a new worksheet but if you wanted it on an existing worksheet you would go ahead and have to select where you wanted it. Let's go ahead and choose OK. You'll see down here it created another worksheet in my workbook. This is my pivot table structure, my pivot table field list, and I get a new option up here, pivot table tools with two tabs, Options and Design, on my ribbon. Now, the fields. Let's go back to our data. Product Store Sales Rep Units. Product Store Sales Rep Units. My fields are my columns. I have four areas here to which my fields will be applied. I have a report filter, column labels, row labels, and my values. Let's check all of the things that I want to include in my pivot table and in this case it's all of my fields and you see when I did that just by checking them it went ahead and put them in these four different areas here these quadrants and we see that they are all in my row labels except for the units let's take a quick look back at our data units are numbers here we have the amount of how many of these individual items were sold and because it's numbers, the pivot table wizard here is assuming that that's what we want to sum up. That's why I put it in there. Now, I don't want all of these in my rows. I mean, I can leave it there. You can see it, it works. It's maybe not the easiest way to look at the data. What I'm going to do is instead move these into different areas. Now, row labels, column labels, the rows and the columns work exactly the same. It just they show up differently. Now I have more products than I do stores so I am going to leave the products in my row labels because I have more rows available to me than I have column space. So I'm going to leave my products there but I'm going to take the stores and drag them, click and drag them up to column labels. So now my stores are listed across my columns. It also goes ahead and gives me my sales reps. Well, I am going to put the sales reps into the report filter area because I want to generate a report for each of my sales reps. And we'll talk about that in future videos. Right now, this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead. You saw that I clicked and dragged everything. But you see these little drop-down arrows? Those give me other options too, like moving them to different areas. I'm going to move this to my column labels and I'm going to go ahead and take stores and move that to the row labels. Just reverse the way I had them listed there. So that's another way to go ahead and manipulate these fields to move them around. But I'm a click and drag guy so I'm going to do that to get it back to the way we were. Now one last thing I want to show you here and that is something that freaks people out. All of a sudden, oh my goodness, all my pivot table tools are gone, my fields list. How do I get it back? I can't tell you how many times when I've taught this, people freaked out. Just click somewhere in your pivot table, gang, and it's all going to come back. When I click away, it's all gone. 
I have to be in my pivot table somewhere to get my pivot table tools and my pivot table field list. And that's how you create a simple pivot table. If you need more information about pivot tables, I have other videos about them, give you a lot more insight how to use them. But for now, thanks, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.